Hi everyone, welcome back to Gardening with Melon. I am here in my backyard as usual. Jack-Jack is here. It's a toasty day, so he's panting a little. He's been drinking from the hose too. Got my dad over here. He's picking up some fallen fruit from our tree. So today we're gonna do a little tour of the garden. Oh yeah, he's getting it out of the net. I'll explain that in a little bit. So we're gonna do a tour of our garden. We're gonna talk about where all these yummy apricots came from. And we're gonna talk a little bit about harvesting. So I know it's been a little bit since you've seen the garden. So I wanted to show you how much it's grown. This is our planter box. It has gotten epically large. Now most of the plants are taller than me, as you can see. And we have some giant tomatoes that are growing. See these ones? They have yet to start to ripen, but they're getting very delicious and large. Our corn and our sunflowers are growing really tall. Here's our sunflower. And you know, um, my dad has been planting additional corn. Uh, let me see if I can show you. So we have some baby stalks coming in there. Kind of hard to see, but um, we we're doing that so that we can continue to have corn so that when one stalk of corn starts having some really good ears of corn, um, we'll eat them and then the next week we'll have some new ones so that we can continuously have corn. So hopefully they turn out great. And um, today we're gonna be harvesting a little bit. So I was gonna show you what we have to harvest. Um, we have some carrots here. And as you can see, oh, you can't quite see. Let me move over here. As you can see, there we go. We got the carrots. You can see the tops heading out. These ones we actually didn't thin out very well. So they're kind of like, oh, there we go. <laughs> that is a great carrot. Look at that. <laughs> look at that carrot. I love how strange carrots look from your garden. That one is very little. <laughs> oh, they smell really good. They smell just like fresh garden carrots. I think we'll leave the other three in. We're gonna leave the other three. So we, we kind of thinned it out late, but they were getting a little crowded, but I love, I know I've talked about carrots before. I love how funny they look and they taste delicious. So it's always good to eat maybe kind of strange produce. So we got some carrots picked. We're gonna make a salad the nice carrot tops. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you all of that. Also our, um, our pumpkin, our little baby pumpkin that we showed last time. Here's the plant. I mean, not pumpkin, sorry, this is our watermelon. Our pumpkin's in the other box. Um, we had a little watermelon that was growing. We didn't give it enough water, so that one kind of died off. It was only the size of my pinky nail, but we have some other ones starting. And right now our um, watermelon, it's running into um out of the planter box and we're actually letting it run towards the sun because watermelons they love a lot of water and they love a lot of sun so we got that our pepper is growing here is our bell pepper so right now it's green but it's small right it's going to be a big bell pepper so once it's full size then it's ripe bell peppers are really interesting because i'm sure you've seen the different colors you've seen green bell peppers yellow orange and red and actually those are bell peppers as they go through their different stages of ripening. So if um, you like green bell peppers, then you'll pick it right once it gets full size. If you like red bell peppers, you'll let it turn yellow and then orange and then pick it when it's red. So that's pretty fun about bell peppers. So I really like yellow ones and orange. So I'll probably let mine go past the green stage before I pick them. So I also wanted to show you our zucchini plant, which was ready for harvesting pretty soon. Oh, we have our first cucumber. Where is it? Oh, underneath. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you can see the right by the blossom. You can see it a little bit. It's right under the blossom. It's starting to be a lemon cucumber, which go grow to be about the size of my fist. But um, our zucchinis are getting ready to harvest. The zucchini, want, you want to harvest it when it's about six, six or seven or eight inches long. Um, zucchinis and all vegetables, um, it can be kind of counterintuitive bigger isn't better so you want your vegetables to be at their peak ripeness um, just because you don't want to let them grow and grow and grow and grow and grow because then their flavor will change they'll become kind of woody not as delicious so this one is about ready to pick we're gonna let it get a tiny bit bigger um because my mom wants to make zucchini bread yeah, but we have bigger. one that we just harvested right here and that came off that zucchini plant 
delicious zucchini. We're gonna make zucchini bread. I would love to know in the comments what you like to make with zucchinis. So maybe you saute them, maybe you put them in a spaghetti sauce. I really like to make zucchini bread. It's very delicious. So we're gonna cook with that sometime this week. Oh, we also have a potato that is ready to be harvested. Mm -hmm. So I'm, um, I'm gonna show you all. We just pulled this one from the ground. We had to thin them out. So even though they're so tiny, we had two potato plants right next to each other that we didn't notice. So we had to pick it so that <laughs> some of the potatoes have a chance to get bigger. But see, these ones are still pretty little. They're last year's cut. They're actually from last year. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we had to pick these out. But this is what they look like when they're under the ground. This is all you see outside. This is what you see under the soil. And um, now that we picked this, the other plant that was next to it is gonna have lots of space to become very large. So we talked a little bit about what we have in our planner box. And I know that at the beginning of this video, you saw my dad picking some apricots. So I wanted to show you our apricot tree. So it's over here. Here's our big apricot tree, starts down there, goes all the way up here. You might see that there's some weird poles next to it. We have some netting. And that's because there are lots of animals and insects that like to get to the food that we're growing, right? Because they live out here and they're thinking, how kind of these people to grow us some delicious food? <laughs> so apricot trees um, are especially eaten, um, they're, they're infested by squirrels and birds. So they like to get them when it's on the tree. And then once they drop to the ground, um, other insects like roly polies or um, snails will get to them. So, um, we have put up a lot of netting around this tree so that we can hopefully keep the squirrels off. So um, mm. as you can see, we have it all set up and we actually had to take it down because we had set it up a little too tight and it was kind of hurting the tree a little bit. So we took all the netting off. We're gonna put it around. We wrap it around these poles so that it doesn't get too tight to the tree. Um, and it's kind of funny because we don't have to net every tree in our yard the same way. So this one, we always have to wrap every part of it because the squirrels will climb up the fence and jump from the grapevines onto the apricot tree, or they'll get on the almond tree next to it. This one? The lemon tree here. Oh, the lemon tree. And they'll jump from branch to branch. Even if it's kind of a far jump, they'll do anything for the apricots. So um, we always try to figure out a way that we can keep them off. And we, um, we also can kind of catch the apricots in the nets when they're out like this at the bottom. So when they fall from the tree, they don't fall into the ground. That helps in a lot of ways because when they fall to the ground, they could get bruised, right? And then also um, those roly polies and snails can get to them. So I also want to show you our um, plum tree, which is also ripening. Uh, this is an example, I got dirt on my face. <laughs> this is an example of when an apricot falls to the ground and we don't pick it up before the roly polies get to it. See, not very delicious to eat. So bef before we head out, we're gonna show you the plum tree over here in our plum tree, we don't have to wrap the whole tree because all we had to wrap, here's our plum tree, very tall. All we had to do is wrap the bottom. So we have chicken wire around it and that way the squirrels can't get up it. And um, we have a little bit of wire on the fence that it's against. So that way we don't have to wrap the whole tree and we have some ripe plums up there. We don't have any on the ground. Oh, here's a ripe plum. A ripening plum. You want to see some ripe tomatoes? Right. How about? Perfect. So, you um, ripe sure, my dad has some ripe tomatoes to show. The reason these are ripe is because they're from last year, so they had more time to grow. The plants stayed, we didn't have to grow them from scratch. But here is a ripe tomato. And you know they're ripe when they um, pick taste off good. the stem. <laughs> yeah, when they <laughs> taste good, but when they pull off the stem easily. So if they were to pull off and you had to pull on it hard, it's probably not ripe even if it's red. You wanna wait until it comes off nice and gently. All right, so that's all for this week. We talked about some harvesting. Um, I'd love to know if you have any vegetables that you're harvesting, please put it in the comments and I'll see you next time. Bye. Say bye. Bye-bye.